Drake. He is currently one of the biggest artists in the music industry, and I would even go so far as to say he's the greatest rapper of the new generation if you just look at the numbers. What if I tell you that Drake is untouchable, not only in the music game, but also on the streets? And before you start flaming me, no, it's not because of him, but because of his surroundings. Drake himself didn't have a tough childhood. Even in his youth, he earned good money working as an actor. Before this time, Drake is said to have lived in a poorer neighborhood. But that doesn't explain why Drake is so extremely well connected today. And in this video, we'll get to the bottom of this question. I'll show you who stands behind Drake, who has his back, and why he's untouchable. But before we get started, I'd like to partner with Whoop Events to give away two concert tickets to you. Because on November 4th, Polo G, NLE Chopper, and some German rappers are coming to Ulm. You heard that right, Polo G and NLE Chopper are coming to Ulm. And all you have to do to win these tickets is comment on this video with your Insta name and follow me and Whoop Events on Instagram. I'll be drawing the winners during my Twitch stream on Thursday. Good luck, and if you want to buy tickets, you can save 12% with the code RZY. I don't earn anything from this, it's just for you. Behind Drake is one of the most respected families in the USA and in the rap game. The Mob Ties from Houston. The head of this family is a certain Jay Prince, who is incredibly close friends with Drake. He's a guy who mainly operates behind the scenes, and according to Wikipedia, he's one of the godfathers of the rap business, and he didn't get that nickname for nothing. Few people have as much experience and as many contacts in the business as he does. Jay Prince founded the label Rap-A-Lot Records, which I'm sure some of you know in 1986. Later, he even managed a certain Floyd Mayweather. He's a boxer that I think all of you know. And that just shows his contacts go beyond the music industry. Jay Prince comes from one of the toughest neighborhoods in Houston and built an empire within just a few years. I mean, by the age of 23, he already had several million dollars in his account. But what makes him so incredibly respected in the streets now? Yes, let me tell you briefly. I'll list a few things Jay Prince has handled. For example, he made sure the beef between Pimpsey and Master P didn't end fatally. According to eyewitnesses, hitmen were apparently involved, whom Jay Prince was able to restrain. Also, Jay Prince is the guy you turn to if you lose your chain in Houston or if it gets stolen. Jay Prince finds the guy who has that chain within a very short time and can give it back to the rapper. So when he put that out there, well, what happened next? Um, my shit he came back. <laughs> came back? Yeah. From the dudes that robbed you? Yeah. Additionally, Jay Prince is an incredibly good friend with Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover is the founder of the Gangster Disciples, one of the largest gangs in Chicago. And that means that people who are under contract with Jay Prince automatically had the protection of Larry Hoover. At least, that's how it used to be. Another crazy fact is that Jay Prince found out very early on that someone was planning an attack on Biggie and Diddy. Yes, Jay Prince warned them, and two weeks later, Biggie was dead. Every rapper who comes to Houston has to check in with the mob ties. That's the most powerful gang in all of Houston. They have a lot of say. And so they can simply say, hey, you can perform here and you can't. You have to be cool with us if you want to perform in Houston. Of course, not everyone agrees to this. For example, NBA Youngboy and Youngboy has a house in Houston. When he wasn't present in this house, the mob ties simply broke in, recorded everything, uploaded it to the internet and took valuables. Later, Jay Prince made a video with the key to Youngboy's Aston Martin. I think you understand now. You don't mess with Jay Prince and the mob ties. Whether it's the 80s, 90s, 2000s or today. And now you're probably wondering, hey, where does the connection between Drake from Toronto and Jay Prince from Houston come from? Yes, Jay Prince has three sons. Jay Prince Jr., Jazz Prince and Jay Prince. Jay Prince Jr. is the founder of the mob ties which are especially known in the world of the new generation. And Jazz Prince discovered Drake. In 2007, he was looking for new people he could hang out with and make money with. And so he came across Drake on MySpace and he showed this then unknown Drake to his father and Lil Wayne, who were both not really convinced by the still young Drake. But Jazz Prince believed in Drake and showed Lil Wayne the music of Drake again months later in a car. And Lil Wayne was immediately convinced for this reason, Jazz Prince was able to make a deal 
with Young Money, that is, with Birdman. And so Drake got his first big contract, and now hold on. Jazz Prince simply got 33% of the earnings Drake made. And so a friendship was also established between Drake and the people of Jay Prince. Drake even refers to the mob ties as his second family and dedicated a song to them. I think you all know it. It's called Mob Ties. But this friendship is also based on protection because just like for other rappers, the mob ties handle a lot for Drake. For example, in 2016, the beef between Drake and Meek Mill reached its climax. And that's because Drake played a show in Meek Mill's hometown, Philly. So far, so good. But Drake disrespected Meek Mill the whole time here, in Meek Mill's hometown. Of course, he didn't take that lying down. For this reason, he called all his people together and drove to this show. Outside, Meek Mill and his people were waiting for Drake. Apparently, there were 100 to 200 people. I think I know right now, we're 100, 200 deep dream chasers. Mm -hmm. We're gonna press this nigga Drake. He disrespectful, disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? But Drake didn't come out. Jay Prince came out. And so Jay Prince saved Drake from this confrontation. Jay Prince also settled the beef with P. Diddy and sent a warning to Youngboy when Youngboy said Drake. This warning was completely public. And yes, I guess, after the stories I've just told you, everyone is, let's say, intimidated at first, even a young boy. And I think you all know Drake and Kanye West had a beef for years. The beef was only recently settled. And now you can guess three times who was the reason for this end. Right, J Prince. Because Drake and Kanye West simply posted a picture with J Prince. And Drake even confirmed later, hey, I only ended this beef for J Prince. It's linking with the ops, bitch, I did that shit for J Prince. Bitch, I did it for the mob ties. The mob ties and J Prince are simply everywhere Drake is. Birdman had this contract with Jazz Prince. With these 33%, this money was never paid out. There were also contract problems with Lil Wayne because apparently he was also never really paid fairly by Birdman. You can guess three times who solved these problems, right? The OG himself, Jay Prince. So wherever it's at, you know, we have to reach and grab it. Even if it's in his ass, we have to get it up out of there. So far, so good. However, public perception of the mob ties and J Prince has significantly fluctuated in recent years, as many people aren't particularly fond of them. And this stems from two incidents. In September 2022, rapper Boozy had a show in Houston. Jeweler Duke the Jeweler came to the show to bring Boozy a new chain. After the show, Duke gambled with the mob ties, who were also present. I mean, the show was in Houston, so it makes sense. J Prince Jr. was also present that night. J Prince Jr. lost $100,000 that evening, which Duke ended up winning. After the event, Duke went alone to his car parked in the underground garage where someone was waiting for him. This robbery ended in gunfire and Duke died in the garage. Rumors quickly circulated that Boozy was involved. Naturally, Boozy denied any involvement as it makes no sense for him to rob someone making a chain for him. So suspicion fell on the mob ties and J Prince Jr. Especially since J Prince Jr. had lost $100,000 earlier that night. However, no one was arrested for this. But one thing you've probably heard about is the incident involving Takeoff. Takeoff was also shot in Houston while at a party with the mob ties. It was Jazz Prince's birthday party and Jay Prince Jr. was also present. There was reportedly a dispute between Quavo and the mob ties which ended in gunfire. Takeoff was hit during the altercation and died on the spot. Again, many people in the industry and fans blamed the mob ties and J Prince Jr. for this. Drake even spoke at Takeoff's funeral, which is confusing because he's still very close with the mob ties. In March 2018, Drake went to Delilah nightclub in Los Angeles with people like Odell Beckham Jr., a waiter named Bennett Zipis, who had the day off, wanted to celebrate there with his girlfriend, Summer Rae. However, Drake only let his girlfriend in and left the waiter outside, which inevitably led to an argument and escalated to violence, with Drake seemingly condoning it. At least that's what eyewitnesses reported. The waiter was pulled out and beaten up outside 
while Drake and Odell Beckham Jr. were just standing there watching. As you all know, hometowns are often the most dangerous places for rappers. PMB Rock, Young Dolph, FPG Duck, the list goes on. There are countless rappers who have lost their lives in their hometowns, mainly because they have the most enemies there. But Drake has all of Toronto behind him, even though he's not from the streets of Toronto. And yes, Toronto and Canada have rough areas too. Drake doesn't come from a tough neighborhood, but he still commands respect. Partly because he brings a lot of positivity to the city. Many people only know Toronto because they know Drake. Jazz Prince even said he didn't know Toronto before Drake. But Drake also enjoys respect due to his connections in the Toronto underworld. Well, I guess the only thing to say to that is, who would have guessed? Top 5 is a drill rapper from Toronto, and his older sister is said to have had a relationship with Drake. Top 5 claims to have known Drake even before his rap career, and goes as far as calling himself Drake's shooter. Top 5 is no stranger to trouble. He's a leading member of the Go Get Him gang, which causes a lot of unrest and violence in Toronto. In February 2021, Top 5 was even arrested for a targeted murder, accused of killing 20-year-old Hashim Omar in January 2021. Before this incident, Top 5 gave an interview with DJ Academics, where he talked a lot about his life and impressions. He claimed to be Drake's shooter, which is unsettling. Let me show you. Somebody that doesn't like Drake comes to the city, we're taking care of that, you know what I mean? No, just that I knew him before the rap shit. Like I used to see him here and there, you know what I mean? And then now, like, now it's a love right now. It's like, I'm a shooter, basically. Yeah, so you the I'm streets. You're the streets. Yeah, I'm Drake's shooter. Oh, shit. Baka Not Nice is a rapper signed by Drake at OVO. Baka himself says he commands respect because he comes from prison and is highly respected on the streets. This is justified. He has faced accusations of armed robbery and human trafficking in the past and even served time for armed robbery. However, his musical career hasn't been particularly successful. He's just a rapper signed by Drake, nothing more. And what's interesting is that he doesn't even really call himself a rapper. He calls himself Drake's goon. Chubbs, also known as Capo, is Drake's right-hand man and bodyguard. He has a history on the streets of Toronto, and Drake even claims that Chubbs would commit murder for him. Chubbs confirmed this, saying he would never allow anything to happen to Drake. Apparently, Chubbs even beat up a group of guys because they were wearing anti-Drake clothing in Toronto. Chubbs is also alleged to have beaten up producer Detail. The story behind this is pretty wild. Detail claims that Drake offered him the chance to be his exclusive producer, meaning he couldn't produce for anyone else. Detail declined. So Drake invited him to his house in Calabasas, where only Chubbs was present. Chubbs then allegedly beat Detail, even breaking his jaw. All these incidents show the kind of people around Drake. So, we found out that the people around Drake mean business, and that he is not to be fucked with. Thanks for watching, bye.